to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The Bible says, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. 1 Corinthians 14, verse number 33. In a world filled with conflict and disagreement and war and chaos, how wonderful it is to know that the God of the Bible is the true source of peace. We hope you get your Bible and stay tuned with us as we're going to think about the powerful message of the peace of God today. Welcome to the Gospel of Christ program. My name is Ben Bailey, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at one 855 458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. The peace of God is clearly seen throughout the Scripture. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 15, that when Christ Jesus came into the world, the angels proclaimed, Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 7, the Scripture says the peace of God that even surpasses all understanding can guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so throughout Scripture, the peace of God is a wonderful subject that every Christian can take comfort in. But what exactly is the peace of God? How do we obtain that peace and what does that peace do in our lives? These are the questions that we're going to look to the Scripture for an answer for today. Let's begin by asking, what exactly is this peace of God? Well, we first know from Scripture that God is the source and the author of all peace. Peace comes from God Himself. Notice 1 Corinthians 14, and I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse number 33. The Apostle Paul, writing to the church at Corinth, says this, For God is not the author of confusion, but is the author of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. In a congregation that was facing a litany of problems related to worship, related to morality, Paul says, I want you to remember this. The confusion, the chaos, the problems that are existing, those don't come from God. God's not the author of confusion. God is the author, originator, and source of peace. When we think about that peace which surpasses all understanding. Friend, let's realize the true source of peace is Almighty God. The conflict that occurs because of sin, the conflict that occurs between man and God and man and man, 
It doesn't occur because of God. God is the remedy for that conflict and He is able to bring peace into the lives of all men and women today. He's the true source. When we talk about what is peace, God's the source of peace. The scripture says this in Romans 15 verse 33. The Bible says, Now the God of peace be with you all. You know, there are a lot of titles and a lot of descriptions that are attached to God. Love, kind, mercy, the God of compassion. But here's a beautiful one. The God of peace as the source of it. If I want to have that peace, I want to know what it is, I've got to have God in my life. Listen later to Romans chapter 16, verse number 20, where the scripture says, And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Again, that title being attached to our God and our uh, Lord and Savior as well, Jesus Christ. Now, as we ask and answer the question from Scripture, what is the peace of God? We know that God Himself is peace, but let's also realize that our Lord Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. He also is a big part of the reason we can have peace. I want you to notice the words of Isaiah chapter 9, prophetically speaking about Christ. In Isaiah 9 verse 6, the Scripture records this, For unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Notice this, Prince of Peace. No wonder in Luke chapter 2 verse 15, when Christ came into the world, the angels proclaimed, Peace on earth. Jesus is the bringer of peace. The division, the war, the enmity that existed between God and man, Jesus bridges that gap and makes peace between God and man. And so he truly is the Prince of Peace. Now, as we think about peace, what else do we know about peace and the peace of God? Friend, peace is something that must be made. It's something that must uh, occur. Something has to, to help bring peace. What is it that makes peace? James 3 verse 18 teaches us this. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. In Matthew chapter 5, we're referred to as the peacemakers. Peace doesn't just automatically occur. It's not just something that one day you wake up and exist. Peace is made. And ultimately, that peace is made by the blood of Christ and by the truth that we obey where peace occurs when forgiveness of sins is made. Acts chapter 2, verse number 38. Now, as we think about the peace of God, I also want you to realize this with me. The scripture teaches there is a correct way to receive and obtain God's peace. I want you to notice Luke chapter 1. Verse number 79, the Bible says, prophetically speaking about Christ and his ultimate coming into the world, that he would give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, now watch this, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Friend, not every way, not every avenue, not every method or approach that man takes, even when he tries, brings to peace, uh, leads to pre peace. Sometimes it actually will lead to further conflict. But what about the peace of God? What is the peace of God? There is a way that brings one to the peace of God, and that way is centered around Jesus Christ. Are we on the correct way? Do you remember the words of Jesus that tie directly to this in John fourteen six? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. We talk about the way of peace, and then we notice Jesus is the way. We're, the, we're told from Scripture clearly that the only way to have the peace of God in our lives is to have Christ in our lives as well. And so what is the peace of God? Friend, as we look to Scripture, we also learn that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, actually preached peace. I want you to think about the message of Jesus, a message of hope, a message of joy, a message of forgiveness, and a message that through Him, 
men and women could obtain and access God's peace. Listen to Ephesians 2, verse number 17. The Bible says, And He, Jesus, came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. What, what did Jesus preach? He preached the good news. He preached the gospel. He preached the message of salvation, a message of obedience to God and salvation in His name. And friend, that message is peace. It brings peace between God and man. Paul said virtually the same thing in Acts 10 verse 36. The Bible says, The word which God sent to the children of Israel, listen now, preaching peace through Jesus Christ that He is Lord of all. And so there's a way. There is a message that's preached, and that message is the message of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the hope and joy of Christianity in Him. You know, when we hear about sin, that, that's a negative, discouraging message. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3, verse 23, and that, that brings conflict, that brings chaos, that brings separation between God and man. But when we hear these words, He Himself, Jesus Himself, bore our sins in His own body upon the tree, that we through Him might be made the righteousness of God, 1 Peter 2.24, that brings Peace and conflict is resolved in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, let's realize this as well. The Scripture says that Christianity is the way of peace. I want you to notice Romans chapter 3, verse number 17. As Paul talks about the power of the gospel. Romans 1.16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And he shows that both Gentiles and Jews and all men need the gospel, need Christianity. Here's what he says in Romans 3 verse 17. And the way of peace of the Jews, he says, they have not known. What is that way of peace? That way of peace is Christianity, it is the good news that the gospel saves men and women from their sins. In fact, the gospel and its powerful message, it's the core of what peace is. Listen to Ephesians 6, 17. And having shod your feet, Paul says, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The good news, God sent His Son to a sinful world to live a perfect life to be a, a prime example of how to live, to make that ultimate sacrifice on Calvary for the redemption of sins. That gospel message is the peace of the gospel, the peace of God in a nutshell. And so when we talk about the gospel and peace being so uniquely tied together, it is indeed a beautiful image found in the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now think with me about this for just a moment. When we think about the question, what is the peace of God? Let's also realize that peace in its basic idea, peace in its basic principle is a bond between God and man. It is a binding together of God and man as seen in Scripture. Notice Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 3. The Bible says that Christians are endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Here's a very unique idea. Peace is that which bonds, which holds, which ties together uh, God and man and brings peace. You know, we think of a bond, maybe you think of something that attaches two pieces of another item together. For example, you might think in the sense of a welder. A welder has two pieces of metal. He wants to weld those two pieces of metal together, and he takes a welding rod and heat in the process, and by that, he binds two pieces of metal together. And those pieces of metal are now uniquely tied to each other. We've got God, and we've got man. Sin made a separation between the two. What is it that binds them together? The peace of God binds them together. They're bound together by God's amazing peace that is found in the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, what else is peace? How else would we define peace? Friend, in the Bible, and naturally as we think about the definition itself, peace is the absence of conflict. When I think about peace, I think about 
tranquility. I think about nobody disagreeing or fighting, not having any conflict or chaos or war in one's life. And in the spiritual sense, the Bible also uses that definition. Look at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verse number 34. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring, bring peace, but a sword. And so here we've got the idea that there is a certain amount of conflict that is created by obedience to the gospel. But also peace is the absence of that conflict. Uh, when Jesus brought peace, he wasn't trying to create peace between governments. He wasn't trying to create peace necessarily in wartime. Jesus brings the absence of conflict spiritually. Don't think that I came to bring peace on the earth in a physical sense. He came to bring peace spiritually speaking. And as Christians, we can have that peace by obedience to the gospel. Friend, as we think about the meaning and definition of peace in the Scripture, let's also realize that we would define peace as, a, as an absolute state of calm, spiritually speaking, an absolute state of calm in our lives. Let me give you an example of that from the life of Jesus. I want you to think to Mark chapter 4 for just a moment. And Jesus is now out on the Sea of Galilee with His disciples a great storm arises. Jesus is uh, asleep in the ship, as the text tells us, and the disciples are worried. It looks like the boat's going to sink. The waves are going to crash over the sea. And so they say to the Lord, don't you care that we're about to drown in the sea, in essence, uh, suffer shipwreck and die? The Bible says in Mark 4, verse 39, Then Jesus arose, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace be still. Now watch this. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. We think about peace. We think about having that great calm in our lives, spiritually speaking. There's a lot, as we said, of conflict, chaos, war, disagreements, fighting in the world around us. But spiritually speaking, as a child of God, we can have that, that serenity and that calm in our life through the Lord Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean there are not going to be problems. That doesn't mean that there aren't going to be things that arise to try to sway us off the straight and narrow, off the path of peace and the way of peace. But I can possess that great calm that Jesus calls to occur miraculously on the Sea of Galilee. Spiritually speaking, I can have that calm, that tranquility, and that serenity in my life by obedience to the gospel of our Lord and Savior. Now, let's ask another question. When we kind of see how the Bible defines peace and what are some of the characteristics of it, let's now ask, how do I obtain this peace? What a wonderful attribute peace is. I want peace in my life. You want peace in your life, especially spiritually speaking. How do I obtain the peace of God? Friend, the wonderful news is this. That peace that can be obtained is available for all men everywhere to obtain it. Listen to Luke chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. The angel said, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. The peace of God is now on earth through the sacrifice and life of our Lord and Savior, and all men upon the face of the earth can have that peace that comes through Christ. I want you to think for just a minute also about the words of John 14, verse number 27. Look at what Jesus said to his disciples. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus said, I'm going to leave my peace with you. That, that peace I'm going to give you. And he says, I'm not talking about worldly peace. I'm not talking about uh, resolution, conflict, and governments, and, and problems like and that. Spiritual peace is available from God, from Jesus and is here for all men everywhere to access. Friend, here's what we're talking about. Knowing that a person has been redeemed of their sins. Knowing that the consequences of those sins cannot hurt us as a child of God. And knowing that we have God and His power and His might on our side ought to bring peace into our lives. I can lay down at night and know and have a certain sense of serenity and tranquility knowing that I have as a child of God obtained an access to God's peace 
by Christ and by living the way God wants me to. Now, we mention again, as we think about obtaining this idea of peace, let's realize that Jesus is that peace. If I want to obtain this peace, I've got to have Jesus in my life. Listen to John 16, verse number 33. Jesus said, These things I've spoken to you, listen now, in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation or trouble. Be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Jesus said, I've told you about all these things, my life, my death, my resurrection, about sending the Holy Spirit, about my word, and in me you can have peace. He says, don't worry, in the world, yes, you're going to have trouble. But in Christ, one can have true peace. Uh, Ephesians 2.14 puts it this way. Of Christ it says, For he himself is our peace, who's made both one, Jew and Gentile, and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Friend, as we think about obtaining this peace, it's a very a, a process that is very unique, but it's a process that's tied to Jesus. How do I obtain peace? Friend, I've got to have Jesus in my life. I've got to be in Christ to obtain that peace. And friend, the Bible clearly teaches how I get into Christ. Galatians 3.27 says, For as many of us as were baptized into Christ have clothed ourselves with Christ. And so we think today about the, the powerful peace of God, what it is, how it's obtained in our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, the Bible actually mentions the exact moment in time when peace occurred. Did you know that peace occurred at the very moment of the cross? I want you to listen to the words of Colossians 2 verse 14. The Bible again says of Christ, and by Him, by Christ, to reconcile all things to Himself, by Him, whether things on earth, or whether things in heaven. Now listen, having made peace through the blood of His cross. Where's the moment in time where peace was made? When the blood of Jesus... Now friend, you think about this. When Jesus has taken up that hill uh, to Calvary, and He's on Golgotha there, and they take His hands and His feet, and they nail Him to that cruel Roman cross, and He hangs there in agony, and the precious blood of Jesus flows down freely from the cross, the Bible says that Jesus at that moment in time made peace through the blood of the cross. What a beautiful idea that in itself is about the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and how we can have access to that peace. And so friend, here's what we ask you to think about today. We've seen the power of God's peace. We've, we've looked at the scripture to define exactly what that peace is. Now we ask ourselves, do we really have that peace in our lives? Friend, you can be sure. The devil wants you to have discord, disunity, and chaos, and war in your life. In fact, he's going to do everything possible to create that through sin. He is like that roaring lion seeking to wreak havoc in my life and in yours. The Bible says in Luke 22, verse 31, Jesus speaking to Simon Peter there, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. It is absolutely the case that the devil wants to wreak and create havoc and disunity and discord and, and the absence of peace in my life. But the good news is this. By obedience to the gospel and through the marvelous sacrifice of our Lord, I can have that peace. Now, friend, we ask you to stop and think about your own life. What's it like right now? Do you really have that peace? Do you have the, the absolute calm spiritually that God wants you to have in your life? Do you have that, that serenity and tranquility that only comes through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Maybe you're thinking right now, that's the opposite of my life. Right now, spiritually speaking, my life's a mess. My life is not where it needs to be. I, I, have, I have doubts. I have worries. I have concerns. I have anxiety. And spiritually, I'm a wreck. Well, friend, the good news is that you can today have the peace of Christ in your life. How do we do that? Remember, to have the peace of God, you've got to have Christ in your life. Maybe 
you don't have that peace because you have never really obeyed the gospel message of salvation. If Jesus is the way, the truth and the life, and that way leads to peace, then friend, we've got to obey the gospel that Jesus clearly teaches us. And so we ask you today to consider, have you obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ? Maybe you're thinking, well, what do I do to obey the gospel? Or maybe I, I thought that I have and I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about that. Friend, here's what the Bible says one must do to become a Christian. First, you've got to hear the all-powerful message of our Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Romans 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I know faith is essential. For Hebrews eleven six says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Whatever way by which I get faith is also essential. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Have you listened to the message of the New Testament? If so, are you willing to put faith in that and believe in Jesus? Jesus said, unless you believe that I'm He, you'll surely die in your sins. John 8, verse 24. Have you really believed that Jesus is the Savior of the world? If so, are you willing to repent of sin in your life, turn from it, do your best to stop doing it, and turn to God? Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Having repented, would you do what the Ethiopian eunuch did and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and Savior, Acts chapter 8, verse 37 through 39. And having done all that to get into Christ where peace is, would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins which bring war and fights? The Bible says in Acts 2, verse 38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Maybe you've never done that. Maybe you've never obeyed the gospel and, and contacted the blood of Jesus, which brings peace. Colossians 2.14. You can do that today. You can become a Christian. You can remove all the doubt and the worry and the discord in your life that Satan and sin brings and have the peace of God if you will simply obey the gospel. Our prayer and our hope today is that God's peace will be in your life and you can lay down tonight knowing, I have the peace of God. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.